and um, we're live. So we're, we're, those of you who are familiar with our, with our organization and our meetings, this is Rise Investments Club. Um, and what we do is we talk to our users, our members, anybody else that wants to um, be part of the community. We talk about investments, we talk about you know, our products, how we're helping Nigerians connect to better investments and how you know, other things that are relevant to your financial journey and your financial success. Um, and so we have this month's uh, meeting is going to be a special one because um, we invited um, <clears throat> someone that a lot of us really know. Um, and if you don't know him, then I'll question where you've been over the last um, few years because um, he's someone that whether in the media, whether in tech, whether in investments, whether it's corporate, um, you will see, um, you will see Victor Asemota. And so he's someone that has talked a lot about investments. He's written about it. He's done it actively. Um, he's lived through it. Um, I think he, 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 there was a, I think on your Twitter bio, it's a, it says a retired investor. And so um, we, we, we talked about how um, to democratize investment opportunities for more Nigerians really. And, and which is kind of like at the heart of what we are trying to accomplish with RISE. And so we felt that uh, Victor Asemata would be someone that would be great to have come in and have a conversation and talk about generally, how do we, how do we democratize access to investments to, to Nigerians and to Africans? How do we make it possible for everybody to have access to the best investments? And even where are those investments? Um, and also, I'll try my best, even, if, even though he, wants, he doesn't want to kind of get into it, but I'll try my best to dig into his own personal journey um, with investments. <laughs> <laughs> the investments and so that, <clears throat> so that we can learn, you know, how someone, because sometimes when you say these things, they sound very up there. It's, it sounds like people don't do them, um, but we can see him. Um, if you can, I don't know if you guys can see the background of where he said, but you can tell that he's, he's done really well. You know, he tries to say, so without further ado, um, I want to introduce Victor Asemota. Please, Victor, um, say hi to us and just tell us a little bit about yourself before we dig into the conversation. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Victor Asemota. Uh, as AK said, you know, I'm a retired investor. And the, the, way, uh, the way that whole title <laughs> came was when I went to the American embassy, you know, to renew my visa. And uh, the guy was asking me where I work. You know, I was I, I was confused at first. Okay, I said, <laughs> I, I started this, I started that, I, I, I did this, I did that, but I'm, I'm no longer running any, any one of them. Right. You know, other people are, right. are running them. Right. Oh, you just say you're, in, are you're a retired investor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, man. What, so <laughs> what that sounds like is the guy has looked at you and he's like, obviously you have money. You know, I can look at it, but you are not actively, you know, doing any of the things that you used to do in the past. So um, that's, a, that's a good title to have. That's a title that I can aspire to. No, I think, I think the thing is this. It's not as if um, I've, I've retired from investing, uh, right. but I, I, I got the point that he made that uh, I've, I've, I've done things and I left them. And I think uh, it's actually a very, very important point. You know, it's something that uh, 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 we need to let it enter our psyche as, as Nigerians and Africans too as well. Uh, people think uh, uh, you you start a venture and you run it forever. No, you know the 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 best um, ventures today are not being run by people that started it. Look at Google and you know well I don't know about Facebook though. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Mark is a different species. <laughs> hey. Oh, thanks. Margaritas. <laughs> it's what I'm drinking. Right? I don't drink uh, alcohol anymore. <laughs> um, okay, what happened was that, you know, in my early 20s, uh, against the wishes of my family, 
they <laughs> wanted me to go to med school in America or become a, a banker uh, or accountant even because I was working in, a, in an accounting, accountancy training school. My uncle started the first accountancy training school in Nigeria called Bio Associates. Mm. So, but, you know, the funny thing is about human beings is I, I saw something in there. We were publishing books for the ICAD exams and we're using computers and all of that. Mm. My affinity became now for the computers rather than than I, because I realized that this was um, going to be the future. So it, it, the thing is that my uncle also saw it too as well, because he was also very passionate about it. He was one buying uh, magazines and all of those things on, on the thing, which actually encouraged me on. And... Oh. Wrong with you? Oh, did we lose you? Oh, it looks like we... Internet issues are trying to ring on our parade. Come on, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Are we live? I mean, uh, can you guys still hear me? Okay, there you go. Um, you are back. You're muted, though. You're you're mute. Victor, your mic is yeah. Your mic is still muted. Okay, okay, okay. So a bit of a uh, bit of technical issue out there. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm muted it now. Okay. Perfect. So, so you're you telling us that your uncle saw the same opportunity um, that yes. was represented. Go ahead. Yes, he, he saw that and uh, this, you know, uh, for him, he, he also knew that it was uh, going to be a very, very important part of it. Uh, my uncle is probably one of the most successful investors in Nigeria, in Nigerian history, because I, there's some of the things that he's done, uh, you know, I, he's like my biggest role model when it comes to uh, investing and in most of the things I do. Um, he, he was the one who told um, the computer village people that at the end of the day, you know, no, well, not computer village people, the people who were selling in Surulere, that at the end of the day, Computers are going to be sold in a market like Utigba. He actually predicted mm -hmm. Utigba long before it happened. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, he, he predicted that the car market was going to be what it was. Uh, mm -hmm. Funny enough, you know, the, man, the man sells bulletproof cars today, even though he used to be a banker. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, he, so he's, he's still around. That means that um, one day maybe we, we can talk to him. In London, mm. first person to set up um, an accounting trading school in Nigeria. He was one who helped create the crop of people who later entered financial services during the banking boom in the 90s. Um, mm. And he was, uh, they, they did the first major bank acquisition, UBA, did a, did a, a couple of other ones. Uh, he was one who Amazing. practically started Oceanic. Then um, one of the few. Uh, people who were CEOs of banks in their 30s. Uh, uh, and he eventually, he was uh, uh, um, one of the core investors in Econet Wireless that became uh, Airtel. You know, nice. you know, he's also done a whole lot, a lot in oil and gas. So he's, 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 he's an industry titan. That's, so, so the two things I'm picking out from, from what you've said Sorry? so far. Oh, can, you, can you hear me? I can hear you very well, yeah. Yeah, so the two things that I've picked from, from what you've said so far, other than the fact that we really need to find a way to connect with your uncle, is that um, he, he invested, really, it sounds like it's a bet on the future, right? You're looking yes. at something and you're saying, 
Tomorrow, this thing is going to be very big. Therefore, I have to get in on it today. So um, you. when you think about investing, you, got, you have to consider what, I, what does, if I put my money here, if I put my time here, my effort here, um, what, am, what am I saying about the future of this thing? And therefore, why do I want to be a part of it? Um, the second thing I'm hearing is that um, for investing, role models are important, right? So Very, very important. Sister, yeah. For me, I think it was my dad that started me on that journey because I'm um, growing up, you know, I'll be on the dining table. Um, and this is when I was young enough that I would sit on top of the dining table, right? Like next to <laughs> <laughs> and, and he'll be bringing out like the annual reports for like back then, USC, um, Lever Brothers, that is Unilever right now, um, and a bunch of other, you know, and he'll be explaining to me that when you buy these shares or when you buy ownership in these companies or when he's bought a property there, that's what, what that does is that he's basically putting money there so that the people running those businesses or people living in those houses are then generating returns or gener making money for him. Precisely. And, Precisely. And, and that's kind of like seeped into my head gradually that, you know what, that means that it's possible for you to make money not only from just working, um, but also from putting your money to work in different avenues. So, so now to bring to the, the question, so that means that having a role model is important. So if you, can, if you are someone who didn't have that opportunity to, to, to learn from or work with a role model, um, how do you then go about, what are, what are your thoughts about, how do you then go about finding someone who you can learn from? I think that would, that would be like a good first question. That, that, that's, a, that's a very, very good question. Uh, uh, this era I, I was talking about is pre the internet being ubiquitous. Now right. that the internet is ubiquitous, there are role models everywhere. You know, like there are people you can learn, learn from, from, uh, from very far. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a guy called Chamat Palapitia. You know, he used to be, an, uh, he used to be in Facebook. Uh, he was the one who started social capital. Right now, that guy okay. is my, my biggest role model. Because ah, the kind of right. things that you know, he 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 looks at the way he has a very um, unconventional way of looking at things, and he's made some very very good uh, bets. You know, he was one of the earliest people to buy a whole lot of Bitcoin himself and Elon Musk before people mm. even knew what what Bitcoin was. The guy had mm. purchased quite a lot of it because mm. what he said was that it was is an uncorrelated hedge, and he actually you know I, I looked at it and I said, whoa, okay, this actually makes a lot of sense. Yes. Because what you what you want is is something that um, doesn't go with the crowd. You know, uh, the biggest mistake a lot of people make is is going going with the herd. Uh, I remember when a lot of banks were doing the IPOs uh, in Nigeria at that time. You know, I, I asked my uncle, "Look, is this is this a good thing to to invest in?" He said, "No." And it turned out that he was right, <laughs> you know, for, for, for somebody who was a banker, yes. you know, yes. you know, and, you yes. know, <laughs> what, what, what he said was, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we're with you, I'm with you. <laughs> and what he said was that when uh, everybody is doing it, then it is a bad idea. Mm. That, that the, the, um, the time he got, they got into banking, they got in there before, you know, it became an every man's affair. That yeah. when everybody is when everybody is going in, that means the people who got in earlier are exiting. Have exited. Oh, I wish I had your <laughs> uncle to tell me that because I was in second <laughs> school at the time, and I yeah. bought shares in a lot of companies that I will not name today because you know. But <laughs> I can name a few. Um, so I bought shares in Dark Communications. Uh, uh, okay. I bought shares in a handful of banks. Um, the only ones that turned out to be okay was GT Bank, but I lost almost everything. And this is money that, you know, I had put together, you know, allowance here, um, just, you know, here and there you make money and then you just say, okay, let me buy shares. And everything just, just went flat. Um, so a lot of people also got bored during that period. And I think, um, so I'm going to ask this question and then um, we'll take maybe one or two questions from the audience. Um, so a lot of people got burned during that period. And they, after that, just swore off of, you know, Precisely. You know, but you see, what, they, what, what they don't understand is uh, this is actually a very long-term game. Uh, yeah. Like, I will buy those, those um, um, bad banking stock today, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because people keep talking about even this the whole devaluation of the Naira and everything. So, you know, you guys don't actually understand. Um, this, 
we are yes, it's it's good. We are at rock bottom now. Mm -hmm. Is it going to get worse than this? That was all we should ask ourselves. Okay. Mm. Um, or is it going to get better? Uh, my bet is on Nigeria getting better because um, I, I know Nigerians. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, and I I I do not foresee um, Niger Nigeria being like this for another 10 years. You know, uh, if I'm making a bet on Nigeria now, I'm making a 10-year bet that things are going to be better, you know, uh, in Nigeria. I have friends who are in private equity. These guys are buying up assets. You know, there are people right. who, are still, who are still bringing in money from outside. Because obviously it's now much cheaper to buy Nigerian assets, mm -hmm. you know, uh, from, out, from outside. So uh, as much as we are uh, trying to preserve um, our assets uh, right. uh, by by taking uh, our money out, uh, we should also realize that at this particular time, for people who have their money out, this is the, the, the time to actually get a whole lot of things very cheap. And mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly what happened when my uncle and the others, the time they acquired banks. The Naira became um, 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 devalued. You know, in fact, one of the banks, it was so interesting that they dis discovered in their New York branch that they had some money uh, that was uh, 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 kept at the value of the dollar at the time the Naira was higher than the dollar. Yeah. <laughs> wow. there was a, people, people forget that there was a time the Naira was higher than the dollar. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I, I, I know that. Yeah, so I, 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 that was the time <laughs> I grew up to as well. So, mm. uh, and the, the thing is, you, you have to ask yourself, okay, look, um, what's what's the possible outcome? Now, it's also important that you also um, get revenue outside too as well, which is very that's very very critical. Those people who are who are making a bet on Nigeria of the future are also people who have made um, a whole lot of money outside Nigeria. Uh, right. They made money outside Nigeria early, and now what they are, what they are now doing is looking at Nigeria and saying, okay, look, you know what? Things are in the next ten years, things are going to be better. Right. Uh, so um, I, I made a bet on a few Nigerian companies, and it turned out very well. People did not expect that, you know, uh, you, you could make that kind of money by investing in in Nigerian, you know, uh, based companies. And uh, now everybody is now rushing to to do to do exactly the same thing. So mm -hmm. uh, there's something that's happening that is on two levels. Now people who are who. Um, are, are totally exposed to the Naira, are looking for a hedge outside. Yes, right. Now, now people who, who, have, who have done that much earlier are looking at uh, Nigeria now that, oh, look, assets are very cheap. Right. You know? Right. And um, by assets, I mean, okay, things that you control. You know, like, not, not, uh, not, not just the one that you uh, co-invest with other people, like, in the stock market. Right. So, uh, uh, and... You know, I foresee a whole lot of takeovers happening uh, this period mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because, like, it's 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 actually now easier for you to mobilize money and take over uh, some companies. Mm -hmm. And right, in the insurance sector, God, the, the things that, that happen in the insurance sector, people do not realize is already going on. There's some mm -hmm. consolidation that's happening that is quiet, that's silent. You know, and we don't realize how valuable something like insurance is. Insurance is basically free money. It's just free contribution. You know, insurance and pension funds. Uh, so, you know, those, those, those places are the places that we should watch. And some, some major moves are, be, are happening there. At, at the end of the day, uh, the people who get rich um, long term are the ones who make these kind of moves. When, uh, uh, they said when, when there is a... a, a, a I forgot who said when there when there's smoke, there's money. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <what> else... <laughs> that's that's interesting. All right. So let me let me let me bring something now. Um the you've made a lot of very important points, and um actually the questions I have are plenty. Um, mm -hmm. but let me ask this. So these are one of the things that we've thought about at Rise. And so one, uh, our goal is again to allow people who traditionally um have not had access to this foreign currency and global level investments um, to gain access to them, to, to become um, 
to have the opportunity to hedge their 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 current exposure um, and yeah. hedge their, their investments today, so that they will not be in a position to take advantage of opportunities like this. So, but we've been thinking seriously about adding adding a couple other um, options on our platform that will allow us to take advantage of the kind of opportunities you've described, right? So, let's say that we we wanted to give um, in the line of access to 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 everyday people of rise access to some of the um, companies mm -hmm. that you've described, or also just um, creating a structure that allows us to own a company directly, right? Precisely, precisely. Yeah, so <laughs> to own a company and then have them participate in that company and get the benefits of that company. So. So you said insurance, for instance, fiction in us being able to say today buy an insurance company. It's okay, this insurance company belongs to because rise is structured as a corporate. No. So we can come exactly. together. Exactly. Um, no, 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 like okay. uh, you see, the, the, the funny thing is that uh, uh, as as um, as um, I don't want to use the word clueless I don't, uh, for regulators as. As, as much as we malign, the best place to do a whole lot of things in, in the world, one of the mm -hmm. best places, I mean. Uh, um, what you just said now is very, very possible. You know, in fact, I know, I know people who have done that. Most, you know, there's something that I, I, I keep telling people. The best people to help you make money are your friends. Mm -hmm. uh, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, uh, and some of the best deals I've seen were things where friends got together and, and, and did something. You know, um, bid bank acquisitions, com uh, co uh, co company acquisitions, and what really happens is uh, because they are they are all aligned uh, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to outcomes, uh, those companies become much better run. Yes. You know, there is no there is no fight as to okay who who should be in charge or because. You know, there, there, there are three predominant in Nigeria. Is there one man owns the thing, the thing dies with him? Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. or, uh, or, or friends uh, gather together and, and, and start something, and they are committed to it, and the, the thing goes okay. the distance. Right. At some point, they, they, they can decide that, okay, look, you know what, we all want to exit. And, right. And, and, and that Whoever exit. wants to retain that management then exits the other people. I, I, I've seen that with, with Econet Wireless, where mm -hmm. people got up to 50x returns because they got together oh. initially. Although there were fights, but the ones that didn't fight, you know, <laughs> exited very well. Exited me, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so rise, rise users, rise members, um, mm. you guys should keep it in mind. And I don't know, it's 136 of, of us here, but keep it in mind that we are going to bring something interesting. And it will be, we'll remind you that it will. investments right and we'll try to also yeah. talk about how can they get access which is one thing that we care about at rise but it's like in general dude some a lot of nigerians tend to shy away from investing in startups why do you think that is okay number one um the startup investment at, at, at the very early stage um is 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 a more of a strategic thing for even the founders, uh, you know, uh, and, and and investors too as well. Now, mm. it, 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 uh, early on, you mentioned, yeah, I, I I made some very very stupid. I lost a lot of money uh, when I was investing in people because I liked them. Hmm? Mm. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, mm -hmm. because I liked them because I, I was supportive. No, now there's room for that. You 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 have people who have to be the fools. Okay. Mm. Um. Uh. There are people who did that, and
ended up doing very well, you know. In some, I, that was one I missed out on, and I was going to invest in the uh, company that the, the founder was in before uh, Andela. But when so when I missed out on Andela, when he now came with Flutter, of course, I, I won't make the same mistake twice. Am I mad? So good relationship thing. It's it's not. It's it's something a lot of people do not know that uh, you have to be. Now, the guy who's struggling in the streets today um, could be the one who make you very, very well. I remember when you know, he, he came uh, to meet me in, uh, in, in Boston to pitch yeah. uh, Fora. He didn't have money to pay for hotels, so he had to do the uh, uh, red eye to San Francisco. I always keep say, telling people that billionaires are created in Nigeria every 10 years, you know? Mm. And so in, in those 10 year cycles, you have to, you have to now start asking yourself, because I think in 10 year cycles now, that's, you know, that's a quotable right there. Billionaires are created in Nigeria every 10 years. Huh. Just go, go, just go back and check because you, because like we have, there's a, in 10 years, everything transforms totally. You know, in like um, we had GSM uh, early two thousands, everything transformed. The next thing, we now started having the whole startup craze. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Two thousand ten. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. So, hmm. so, 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 th this time around now, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we, we need to start asking ourselves, okay, what, what's going to be uh, very, very different in the next ten years? Now. Unfortunately, we have a pandemic. We have, we had, I, I would say, fortunately, because like what what the pandemic has done uh, uh, for me is like make things, make decisions very, very simple. It is very binary now. You know, any company that that thrives this period uh, is most likely going to be um, a big player in the next ten years. Hmm. Thrive as in not. I don't mean taking advantage of of um, of, of of people or whatever. You know, like. You know, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, for our Asian business, yeah, the numbers tripled. And I looked at it and I said, okay, that tells me clearly what the future of financial services is going to be. It's not the banks, not the bank branches. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Now, um, something else that is under the current that a lot of people do not realize, cooperatives. Yes. You know, the article I shared with you and I wrote about it, Mm -hmm. Now, people are, are, are realizing that um, the, the best way to hedge against risk is to come together as a group of together, friends to, yes, yes. Uh, to, to, to share the risk and reduce costs of, of many things. Mm -hmm. So those things are going to be major, major in Africa. You know, like uh, people think, uh, when, when they think, they think fintechs are the ones that are going to replace banks. I say, no, it's going to be something that doesn't even look like banks. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, it's going to be, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's going to be markets. Uh, I was, I was, somebody asked me uh, last week, I, I told him, look, how about um, the dues you are paying in your cooperative becoming uh, securitized? You know what I'm saying? So hmm. that means you, um, you can trade your <laughs> investment in yeah, a cooperative. In a cooperative. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yes. So that's, that, the era, this is now the era of markets. You know, a whole lot of things are going to change. I, I keep asking, okay, if you look at the good trader, you know, people look at uh, the value of people as the money in the bank, but they don't realize that people are worth a whole lot more. What are the value of the goods in his warehouse? Hmm? What are the value of the goods that he has in his shop? Now, I learned a, a very big lesson when we were doing Equinet. Um, we raised $285 million in one month in Nigeria, all local. How did that happen? The guys from HSBC Capital, they came. We were talking about oh, my money, money. The guys look, oh, wait a minute, you guys, what's your net worth? Would you, would you understand that net worth me means the value of everything you have, including your asking. In fact, including everything here yep. that is part of my net worth. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It was something I learned from my uncle when he was, you know, like when he built his um, was his second house, but the first one was in Benin. Mm -hmm. You know, every time. First of all, he insures everything inside the house. 
So he knows the value. Mm -hmm. Then every time he does an addition, he adds it to the value of the house. And I was like, whoa. So, and that house is now what he now uses to take loans to build other houses. You, you understand what I'm saying? The valuation yeah. of, your, yeah. of yeah. your business, of, your, of, your, of you, of your <laughs> people don't know how to value themselves. Mm -hmm. So it was that valuation that we used um, in, of, the, of the shareholders to take bank guarantees to, raise, to, to get the two hundred eighty-five million dollars And you know, oh. it, was, <laughs> it was insane. So and I, and I was saying, this is what people who have great financial minds, you know, can understand. Yes, we have a lot of dead assets that need to be that need to be turned liquid, and in the next ten years, we're going to see a whole lot of that happening. You know, awesome, awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, a lot of what you've said now, just to to bring it home, and audience, if you have questions, please, um, there's a Q and A box at the bottom. Just um, go ahead and shoot those questions. Um, at the bottom of the of the of the um, of the chat box, right, so that we can we can start tackling some of your questions. But please um, ask all the questions that we have. We, we have him for at least another thirty minutes um, to like we have him for the whole hour. So please bring all your questions out. Um, let's 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 really get the most we can out of him. So, but to bring one I of the there's there's some five questions on Q and A already. I think yeah, questions. yeah. So so some of the um, some of the points that you make though is that. When you come together, so in, in terms of giving people access, when you guys, yeah. when we stand alone individually, a lot of us, and if you're not already rich and well-known <laughs> and powerful, the, one of the best opportunities then is if you come together as a group, set up a structure, and then use whatever personal assets or personal worth you have, and then you aggregate that and backstop that organization. That organization then is able to... to, to let, let, let me tell you a secret, Aki. This yes. is something that a lot of people do know. If you look at, there is no rich man that is rich alone. Yes. You know, a lot of people think, uh, you look at, now, um, Dangote, there's something somebody told me a long time ago. Said that every Dangote depot owner is a billionaire. Mm. Now, but no, not depot owner, depot manager. Hmm? Yeah. Like, like, like and, and, I, and, I, and I was looking at it and I was saying, okay, that's actually a very, very smart idea because if those people were not comfortable, there's no way uh, he would have amassed all the wealth. That it, wealth is com a community effort. It's a community would, Look at Alibaba. You mm. know, you, 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 you um, look at Jack Ma and his friends. The way they got together to do do uh, mm -hmm. great Alibaba. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, because the, the, there's this whole media narrative of of the great guy, the rich guy. He's, you know, the. Um, like there's a talk I normally give to startups uh, at, at the Google uh, Accelerator. I always tell them that, look, that whole um, king, the startup, the, the founder as a king, uh, it, it, it's, it's uh, you know, is a myth, okay? Because uh, um, there, were, there was a, there's a guy, uh, Noam Wasserman, wrote a book, Founder's Dilemmas, very, very great book. I recommend that for any founder to read. Say so there are two choices where you are, you're making when you're starting a business. Do you want to be king or do you want to be rich? Okay? Mm -hmm. um, people who want to be rich um, do not impose themselves as kings. Um, they may emerge kings because, you know, people need somebody uh, to actually be the, the face of, of the thing and lead it. But, you know, um, people who, who, who want, always want to be kings are really rich. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Right. 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 So, so yeah. if you if you look at most most really really rich people, wealthy people, not the ones that are just have a few uh, millions and are making a lot of noise, uh, there is a community behind them, mm. or they are part of the community. You know, it, okay. it's it's some it's something that. Um, I, I I kept looking at I kept looking at you know all the major banks in Nigeria. If you look at their history, how they started, um, somebody may have an idea, but he got his friends together. Yes. You, you know, if there's even one of them. It was his village community people that that that, that were the city investors. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so rise at at the heart of rise. One and one of the things that we say um, at rise is that investing is a team sport. Um, yes. and, and one of the, the, there's a vision we have for our community. So 
about you know about three thousand five hundred strong at the moment, uh, and That's we're good. looking at how yeah, we're looking at how to then um, create more structures that allow more people to come in and allow that collective um, effort to just drive what we do. Um, even we're we're even thinking about changes to the product to more center the the community approach. Um, and so so we 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 a lot of what you're saying make a lot of sense to me. Let me let me take so a lot of the questions we have now are specific to rise um okay. so um i'm gonna ask some of our um my 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 team members on the call please feel free to just answer um some of the questions that are rise related what are our investment options how does our real estate work um how does other you know the asset classes um because i really want us to focus on how do we create access how do we help others um, both people on this call and in which you are recording this, so other people that will listen, how do we solve the problem of access for the most number of people? So when we wanted to start RISE, for instance, um, some, and, and my, my story about Ian, and, and that's going to bring me a point about social media networks. Um, Ian, Ian and I started following each other on Twitter, and we always talked um, back and forth. Twitter has really been like so massive for me in terms of building the network, right? Because especially at the time I was living in the U.S., um, working in, um, going to school at the time, but eventually working. And so it helped me build that initial audience. So he and I met in person after following each other for like two years plus. We met in person um, in 2011. We met in New York um, one summer. We, we hung out, went to a few, a few events um, and really just bonded from there. And so when he started, uh, before Fora, it was there was a company book net so that he did in, in, in Canada. Yeah. And then he started for he was like, dude, when are you coming back to Nigeria? You know, and and I was like, dude, not yet, man. I just, you know, I wasn't at the right place at that time. And then he was just telling me, Oh, there's a lot happening. And then, you know, Andela came. Um, I remember the first time that I had to now book an appointment when we wanted to talk. He's like, dude, um, I know, I know we need to catch up, but I'll send you a calendar invite. And it was for like maybe a month. <laughs> a month, <laughs> like a month down the line, I was like, "Dude, we went from like, oh, let's just chat whenever to like, we have to book an appointment." But that tells you that you know things are changing, and and again, growth is happening. Which again, it was perfectly, um, yeah, it was exciting to me. And so, fast forward to Rise today. Guess who was the first check into Rise? Mm. Okay, <laughs> that, that was it. And this was before we had a product, before we had a team. I just I left my my first um, startup buy coins because I'm like okay I, this is what I want to do and I think it's super important that I start it now versus you know waiting till like a bit later because this is that moment and he was like yeah he was among the first ones that say you know what do it because you've already got into a certain milestone with your first um, uh, <laughs> company and therefore it's going to keep growing start the new stuff now so he was like if I, if you need to be convinced I'll, I'll write you a check and he did. And so um, that, that was just, again, relationships. So um, for me, our hope or, or what, what we're trying to do or hope to achieve with RISE is we make it possible for more people to strike those relationships, learn and, and connect with each other. Um, because that's where some of that magic happens. So someone asked a question, Demi Taiwo said, what are some key pointers to watch out for when you want to invest in a Nigerian startup? So you mentioned relationship. So, but what if the relationship is not there? So, what are any pointers or non-negotiables that, that you think are, are necessary? So, in a situation where relationship okay. is there, what should we look for? Uh, uh, first of all, you know, as an early stage investor, I don't think a founder will take money from you if you if they don't know you. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Now, if if a, if a founder um, is asking you for money and they don't know you, please be worried. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so the, the, I don't think the relationship part is negotiable uh, because you know it, it, you you have to know each other. You know it's not it's not just a random. People don't just go around shooting checks at, uh, at, at, at any, anybody that uh, that comes around. Exactly. Now you have um, angel investor groups uh, that change all of that. You know which um, uh, rise can also become to as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for for angel investor groups, you know, people come together, so you don't even necessarily need to know the startup. Uh, uh, the the group has a name, credibility, you know, right. that the startup can now uh, 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 tag into. Okay, you have also asset management companies, uh, people like ARM, um, mm -hmm. that that do this for a living. You know, uh, of, of course, AK is a beneficiary of, of, yep. of that. A ARM, ARM is one of our investors. 
Um, <laughs> and, and yes, and, and, and Asemota was also one of the people that were instrumental in making that happen. This is even before you and I had a very strong relationship. I think it was mostly, we were talking on Twitter, um, but we didn't really know each other in person, but still he was like, you know what, I like what you guys are doing. And um, he was among the panelists that had to make a decision about whether or not ERA will move forward with us. And I was like, yeah, you, you guys have my vote. And so um, I, I, I think that that's, that in itself um, was, was the journey to us now being, being, having the relationship that, that we're building today. Uh, full disclosure, I'm on the advisory board of uh, ARMFA. So anyway, that's <laughs> that for for me uh, for startups. Uh, two things: uh, you need to also look at the future. I, I think ten years ahead. Is, is this startup going to be around in the next ten years? Um, are they solving something that's going to be important in the next ten years? Uh, sometimes it may not even be the ten years. Maybe something that's so big, something so scary. There's a guy who came to me with an idea uh, last week. Mm. I looked at it and I was saying, you know, first of all, he has secured his brand, he has secured everything. Mm -hmm. And it, it's something that normally you think working with government is, is a very risky thing. But mm. I realized that, oh, you know what? The, the government does not have a choice but to work with him on this thing. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So I, I looked at it and I was saying, wait a minute. You know, it was something that, that looked so obvious. But you know, I, I'll, I'll give you a hint. Like each time you, you have to travel, you know all those stupid forms that you fill, you know, all mm -hmm. those, uh, you know, what, yeah. if you, what if you do it before you even leave your, 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 house. your location, your house, and, and it's, you just verify it with a barcode you, that you generate when you get to port. And, mm. I, and I looked at it and I said, whoa, wh why did this anybody think future. of this? This is the future. In, 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 in America... Uh, if anybody has ever gone to hospital in America, when you, um, in fact, before they can, when you book your appointment, you, there's a barcode that is generated. Is that barcode that, you, that can actually now take everything that you are doing? And I, and I, was, I was looking at some, so if um, a relative has also told me something similar. She, she was saying, okay, well, how about all the civil service uh, problem with uh, missing files and everything? What if we uh, barcode the documents and trace? Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are simple things. In mm -hmm. Brazil, all of the invoicing is centralized. Is everything passes through one one place? All yes. the, all the, which actually helps helps uh, taxes. That's it, exactly everything because mm -hmm. they've simplified those things. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amazing. Now, now, Amazing. People don't understand that, and this goes back goes back to what I was saying earlier about. Uh, Nigeria hitting rock bottom and, and, and coming back from the rock. The government is so broke now that they need things that are, that are going to generate revenue. Mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. <laughs> so yes. There, there, are, there are ideas that are so big that you don't have a choice but to say, okay, look, you know what? Let me take a risk hmm? and put right. some money in it now. Okay? Right. right. Now, now okay. <laughs> so there, there are the, others that... Sorry, so, please go ahead. So one of the things that... that that I want to, the question I want to ask there, and um, I don't know if someone already asked it, is that element of risk, right? So we yeah. said that, that, that when you make an investment, you're making a bet on the future. Um, but at right. the same time, not all of those bets work out, right? So yeah. how should an investor, how should an aspiring investor um, think about investments that don't work out? Because for, for me, one of the decisions that, uh, that we're taking out of this is that we're going to formalize a vehicle that allows our members and our users get access. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to come to people like you, hopefully get some uh, um, companies that are good potential companies. Some of the people that are my friends, you know, Timmy is there, the guys that are uh, Eden are there. So, you know, you have this network of founders, but investors coming in, how do they set expectations with risk? Because some of these bets don't work out. So what would you say to someone trying to make investments and they don't work out? What would you tell them? How do how do you advise them to think about it? Uh, when I, the, the very first, I, I think the very first five investments that I made um, didn't, didn't pan out. Um, one of them even came to me to help him get a job. The other one, I, I only just heard that he was he was abroad. You know, oh, wow. <laughs> Where, uh, you know, like I, I just I, I just saw linked linked a LinkedIn update that he he started work in Canada. Oh, you know, wow. um, there, there are there are people who did. 
some very bad things in the early stages. You know, there are, there are people who um, thought the investors' money was uh, for them to no, live, no, no, no. live a particular life. So, um, you know, this, this is something very, very bad to say, but I, I, I say it anyway. I don't invest in hungry people. Huh? Mm. You know, mm. and, and I don't invest in first-time founders. Mm. But um, the first time founders, they can take the risk with somebody. You know, like, you know, you may, I, this fear of missing out thing, I don't do yeah. it. Do, do, do you understand? I yeah. don't do, I don't do things because the crowd is doing it. I, I don't, I, uh, I, I evaluate um, things with a whole different, you know, is the person also trustworthy? Mm. Is, is, that, is another thing. Yeah. Um, Something as, as simple as um, lying about something is a, is a red flag. Or something as simple as, you know, any, any basic kind of dishonesty, you yeah. know, is yeah. a red flag. You know, uh, like somebody <laughs> who, um, you know, stabbed his former co-founder in the back is now coming to meet me and say, oh, invest in this startup. I must be an idiot to do that because I know what you're going to do to me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So yes. now those are all the risks that um, we all, we, you know, we took and we we paid dearly for it. Um, what I think is, uh, uh, you know, the thing is that when people lose money, a lot, of, a lot of people do not talk. I know there's a major, very very big startup today in Nigeria. Yeah. I know the first investors who invested in it. Um, when the we they saw that the guy was um, not being, they forced him to 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 you know. Give them back their money. So he had to do a round and, and they exited. He even got made money on it. Mm. Now, um, for, for 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 those those guys, they, they, there was no compromise. They, they, you know, they said no. This is not what we want to have uh, our hands in. Okay, but there are other people who invested in it. They trust they trust that guy. Uh, um, mm. they are, this is about principles too as well. Yes. Uh, uh, there are yes. some people who will feel, oh, look, um, th this is an acceptable um, problem. Right. Um, for me, I'm, uh, uh, there are two, two, two sets of people that I'm investing money on behalf. I'm investing money on behalf of my children and my wife. Um, <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. also investing other people's money. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. When, yeah. when, when you're investing other people's money, you know, in fact, I don't see the money as my money anymore it's not even the one that i'm doing on, on behalf of my children and my wife yeah. it's not my money so exactly. like uh, any family investment i make i, I my wife thank god my wife is a finance professional mm -hmm. you know so so you know she has an mba from inside and everything so she she's able to assess those things dispassionately Frequently, yes so, uh, and tell you okay look this that sometimes she's made a bad call but you know um uh, uh, like if, if I know the domain more than her, I, I'll still do it anyway, you know. Uh, but but I listen to her, so it, 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 it's also good to get the perspective of other people too as well. This is why this thing is not a one man thing. I keep I keep stressing that it, it's it's uh, you you make money more from your friends than anything else. Um, you know your friends are the ones who will come to you with. Also, still be well of your friends too, as well, because you're, you're, sometimes your friends can be compromised. True. You know, and also some of the biggest losses I've made because I listen to my friends too, as well. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like Andela was because I listened to. He said, "Ah, you know, uh, they don't." But, but for me, I wanted to invest in much more in Fora. So by right. the time I, I I told myself I wasn't listening to them, Fora was already dead. You know, right. <laughs> if I had just given the boys some money. And the funny thing was that it was uh, money I was willing to lose because I like the guy. Mm -hmm. I, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So, um, what, a, a very important part of this is don't invest something you, you can't afford to lose. Right. Uh, right. Uh, whatever I put in the in the capital markets, whatever I put in uh, other stuff, is something I can afford to lose. Now, uh, the biggest investment is what I made in myself and in my businesses. Um, the time, yeah, no, seriously, because the time, the time um, uh, of uh, that whole uh, 
a bank IPO. You know, mm -hmm. uh, th that was the best advice I got from my uncle. The guy was asked, okay, don't, don't, don't your business, <laughs> does your business not need this money more than uh, uh, the banks? <laughs> you know, right. people were looking at how they were, they were talking about how, uh, you, and that's why Ponzi schemes work. When you start seeing um, what others are making, you get enticed. So okay. I said, okay, you know what, yeah. let me double down. On, on my business. I, I, I remember I had a hundred thousand dollars free. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? That period. I was chasing a, a, a startup in Kenya. You know, so, sometimes I, I thank God that all of those things did not happen. I was gonna buy a house or the house part in, in Manchester was one that paid me though. Because like <laughs> that house uh, was a, a well, house with seven thousand pounds. Damn. But it's now like four hundred thousand pounds. Exactly. I was say today would be so, all right, yeah. let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say, so now one of the things that you've said is look at the principles of the founder themselves, right? So for those that ask what to look out for, look at the principles of the founders themselves. Um, yeah. Look at their relationship with, with just mental uh, uh, like values, value, yeah. right? That, that they house and they actually live out. You, you can tell that this is the value that drives this person. And then you also made an important point that you know, don't be that person's like uh, their their lifeline out of you know poverty or, or hunger. Yes, right? exactly. so, if, if, if you're you're not, forget it. Yeah, you're setting up the incentives wrongly. Um, so there's there's um, and then th thirdly is um, there has to be beyond just that you have to look at other people within your circle and when it comes to like the French part, people that know their stuff and people that are um, that are knowledgeable. And they've also shown that they, they can execute at that level and they look at what they're doing. But at the same time, don't listen to them too much if you feel strongly about something. So there's a question that someone asked, like, oh, someone said, um, Daniel and uh, for early stage, okay, what, what should we look out for, especially when we don't have massive funds available? Let me answer that one real quick because thanks to, thanks to, to, to Big Chief, we're going to potentially structure an angel investment fund or a startup in investment arise because of our product and you eventually have access to um that way you don't need a lot of money. Funny thing was when we started Rise and we had a conversation with this guy Jonathan Nelson from Hack Fund. I don't know if you know Hack Fund in, in, yeah, in California. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they had a, they had this idea of a distributed like a if a fund, a retail fund that then makes investment in startups. And so we kind of struck like a, a partnership where we add that into our platform so that some of our users would then get access to that fund. But we took it out, yeah, we took it out at the time because see, we're just starting. Um, we're mm -hmm. launching a new product and there were so many moving parts that people did not understand. Um, even investors at the time were telling us, you know, you're trying to do this, but it's almost like, how are you gonna make VC model work for retail investors when you two are just starting out and people don't know this. So, so I, I was like, you know what, Repetition. fine, let's just put that. It's something that we're definitely going to bring back. Maybe not with hack fund, but maybe we'll just create a fund of our no, own. No, no, and, uh, sorry, sorry, let me interrupt you. Uh, yes. If you go to uh, AngelList, they, they, they have this whole new concept of rolling funds. Mm -hmm. Very, very simple uh, so, subscription. So it's not about somebody paying... Um, a bulk money at once. Huh? It's, it's money that people can can afford. Let's say I have a subscription, I'm paying 2000 dollars every quarter. Uh, if, if once it's subscription, people don't they won't really really bother. So so now uh, as to whether um, uh, because you're just starting and all of that, that's irrelevant because like, it depends on who's managing that fund. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, um, if if like in the case of hard for to somebody else, okay? Yes. So yes. if, if there, is it a risk that um, people are willing to, to take? Now, the, the thing about startups is that they are uncorrelated with the general yes. market. That's why I love startup yes. investments. So, uh, you know, uh, for every dollar mm -hmm. uh, I have invested in, uh, in, the, in the public market, uh, my startup dollar, uh, Mm 
dollars in from public market returns, you've made twenty-seven thousand dollars from startups. Precisely. And startup investments so far have only been accessible to people at your level, right? You guys are the orgas. <laughs> however much you might deny it, however much you might deny it and say no, but the truth of the matter is that the average Joe on the street did not have a come to him and say, please make an investment in my startup. So that means that um, for, for the last, say, let's say the startup boom started in, 10, in 2010, for the last 10 years, um, the, the startups that have all emerged, most of that capital were either foreign or like really high net worth people. So what we are now- no, no, okay, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me, sorry, let me pass okay, something there. there, there um, if you look at even, uh, let me just, let's call it a spade a spade, flutter wave. Uh, there is also a part of the thing that they gave to me free that I didn't pay for. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. advi like in advisory shares. Yeah, yeah. I, I gave them some money. But I think the, the, the important thing is uh, the reason why they want you in there. Hmm? Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, there are two types of investors uh, for a startup at the early stage. Uh, the ones who are very, very strategic, who will give advice and who will lead them in the right direction. And they have skin in the game. So usually when they give, they give that kind of equity um, to them is to also uh, um, make sure that they are, they are committed, okay? Yeah. Then the, the, other, the other ones are the ones who will just keep the wrong way uh, going, okay? Right. Now, right. Uh, um, if you aggregate retail investors properly and um, with the right opportunities, they can actually help to extend that wrong way. Um, mm -hmm. And what usually now happens is that the, the people who are, uh, organizing that um, become um, the ones who um, are, are, are the ones making the decision, helping the startup make the right decisions and and and, and, and move things forward. So, so, so you, when when that kind of thing is being done, I, I think the most important part is uh, who is making the decision, and uh, it's not it's not just about. Uh, um, Pulling money together, you mm -hmm. know, do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, does yes. this person have? Um, there's a rolling fund that I've subscribed to now in Silicon Valley. I subscribed to it because I looked at the guy who was who, who was leading it. I said, okay, this guy he has a whole lot of um, connections. He, he went to his white combinator. He's he's like he's part of the white combinator mafia. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you <laughs> understand what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, I, 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 and he's, he's, <laughs> Personally, he's made a whole lot of money from, mm -hmm. from doing that. Mm -hmm. So he sees things before other people see it. See you know? right, right. Uh, uh, so so that, that's a very, very, you know. So that, it, uh, that brings me, sorry to, to call you, but yeah. that brings me to the question about trust, right? So someone asked yeah. a question um, that, please, I want Big Chief to talk about trust. Nigerians got burned buying shares. We, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them. And I believe yeah. that as well has made us look warm about investing. Companies like Rise are creating the access, but why should we trust them? Interesting. Um, interesting, interesting question. <laughs> so, so now I'm ready to the end. Um, and, and maybe Big Chief, take a stab at that, and then I'll, 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 I'll still go ahead and answer that question since the person talks about Rise. Okay, <laughs> okay first, first of all, I, I would be doing it with Rise if I didn't trust them, one. Number two, um, the people that are backing Rise are people that I trust, two. Mm -hmm. Number three, um, they have a very, very sound plan. You know, it's, it's not, um, this is not, you, you, they're not doing it because um, they want to be one of, they're not, it's not a wannabe thing. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. seen, I've seen uh, interesting thing that people don't, don't, uh, don't understand. Like when this whole thing about uh, people investing in uh, uh, equities outside started, they're very weak. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. One of the biggest coincidences in my life. Um, I had a chat with Bamboo on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, I had a chat, a chat a ch no, sorry. I had a chat with Chaka before Bamboo. I had a, ch a chat with Chaka on Monday, then uh, uh, Bamboo on Tuesday. Then on Thursday, we had a meeting uh, where we had to uh, assess uh, true finance. You know, <laughs> wow. uh, in, in the area. So and I, was, I, was, I was looking at myself and I said, okay, this is interesting. Now, um, um, the, the first two are people I'm very close to. <laughs> you know, then the other one, uh, uh, fiduciary responsibility. 
So mm. now, sometimes some of these ideas can just happen all at once. Now with rice, um, you know, when I, when AK told me about, okay, this is what I'm trying to do and all of that, I sat and listened to what he's saying. I said, okay, you know, this is different. You understand what I'm saying? Like people mm. who start, I, I saw a, a tweet recently, somebody comparing, I said, no, 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 you don't get it. This is a different approach. Mm. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. there, there, there are others that uh, put the risk totally on the, um, on the, the, on the investor. Yes. <laughs> But this one, you're actually de-risking it by saying, "Okay, look, you know what? This is a more uh, a steadier approach to to go to, to go about this." Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, your diversification of assets, doing this, doing that, and I said, "Okay, this this is interesting for somebody who doesn't know anything, or who's not like uh, risk on." Yes, you know, th this is actually a very very good place to start. Okay, mm -hmm. and Look at the people behind them. You guys are in textiles now, you know. Yes. Uh, you have you have ARM behind you. you have, yes, come on, like there, there are some things that. Keep increasing that confidence with the kind of people they keep us sitting with. Absolutely, and, and I appreciate I appreciate that perspective so much. So I I, I will add what I'll add to this is um, the, the 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 rationale behind us starting rise um, didn't come from oh what can we start so that that is a viable Precisely. business to do right. So let me let me give some background. In 2014, I was working in financial consulting. Um, I've been doing investments. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but I bought Bitcoin in 2013, sold it uh, around 20, yeah, I bought it in 2013, sold it around 2015, made like more than 10x, um, and 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 I just kept buying. property portfolio at the time um one of them okay. is there's a student housing um student housing um That's Carlisle. Can you imagine yeah. This? <laughs> yeah in london like they did um they, they call it pure living is in central london and so they are they are housing students from like university of london um uh so and it's like i saw how much they were making right and then at the same time um the year before that in, in 20, 2013 i just finished working with uh, conoco phillips and I actually was sitting on um, Barnett Shale. So Barnett, Barnett is in uh, East Texas. So I saw the shale boom happening in real time. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigeria, I don't know what's coming, right? Um, my supervisor then used to work in Port Harcourt, and she told me the story of how they left Port Harcourt because of all the militancy, and they actually got attacked, and they were airlifted out of Nigeria. And she was like, it's never going back to Nigeria. And a few years down the line, Conoco Phillips divested their, their assets in Nigeria. So, but oh, I, 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 yeah, I kept thinking about the impact. So when um, shell, shell um, volumes hit the market, oil price fell um, around 2014. And I looked at the central bank balance sheet and I'm like, this thing at some point, once their revenue dips, um, mm -hmm. I was modeling how long it's gonna take for the valuation to happen, right. And so I wrote a post. That post is still up on my blog in 2014, November 2014. I'm like, see, if you're in Nigeria, if I were you, start looking for ways to move your savings into dollars because at some point this devaluation is going to happen. I don't know when, right? But um, CBN managed to like push it out through most of 2015. And then June 2016, that devaluation hit. And it was massive. It was like from 150 to 360. It was like ridiculously massive. And the impact of that cascaded across. That was when I was like, people, and at that time, I wanted to recommend places to do dollar investments. But the, other than domiciliary accounts, if you weren't like someone high up that you could go to a bank and, and, and try to structure something, there just wasn't a lot of options for you. So that's when I started thinking about it. Um, and then I was like, I've seen this happen. I've seen it play out with my parents' generation. I've seen it play out with our generation. And I'm here looking at people making dollar returns every day from different asset classes. Um, and it's like, it's not rocket science. Let's go and find a way to connect. 
So start, start, I started that process in late 2016 to try to understand how might we go about building this. And then we run into the, the, the problem that, you know, capital controls might be, you, might, you can't exit in and out the way yeah, you want. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> I was like, crypto seemed to be like, oh yeah, crypto is the solution, right? Like if you can move in and out via crypto, then you can access whatever investment you want anytime. Nobody can stop you. That's how Timmy and I started talking. That's how, what led to us starting Bitcoin Africa, which became Bitcoins, became a crypto exchange. Because we're like, let's build a way that people that are in America that can use Coinbase and move crypto back and forth can do the same thing in Nigeria. Once that problem was solved and Bitcoins was growing and we're booming, I realized, that, all right, this is just an intermediate problem that we solved. The, the real problem is still out there, which is, you know, now access to these investments. That was kind of like, because a lot of people were like, oh, why would you leave Bitcoins? You, know, you got into YC. You're doing, but it's like, yeah, there's something else driving us that, that for me, that is still out there unsolved. So that's what I left and then started Rise. And so along the line, again, we've always made decisions around, like, how do you take someone that is just everyday, everyday person, not a financial expert, and give them the better financial results, right? It's not going to come from allowing them to trade by themselves. Like, that's great. And it's a great business and it will make money. And it will, but again, it's not the best thing for a beginner. No. It's for people that have gotten to a certain level. So that was what informed what we're doing at Rise. And, and so all of that dovetailed into how can we make sure that, and, and when we started Rise and you're like, oh, you have access to real estate um, investments. You know, you have people, so we have all our real estate managed by like third parties that, that we hire to, so that we, again, we're not interfacing with the properties. That's like a whole other job in itself. So we outsource that, but we do the management, we do the ownership at the group level, and, and someone said, you know what, h and would love this idea. Why don't you start from there? And we're like, yeah, but we'll just be solving this, the problem for people who already have options. How can we solve this problem for everyday people who need these options? And so um, that's put, putting all that together, I think then we, are, we appreciate people like, like Iolua and, um, and ARM and today Techstars who have really dug through our process and understood and also helped us improve on it. So um, when it comes to trust, um, what we're also going to do as we then create a fund that brings people into like startups is that um, we're going to, you know, leverage people like Asimota, people like myself, um, people like others. There's a, a few other people on our team who either have access to some of these startups, have relationships where startups come to them. And then we say, okay, let's now provide a vehicle where capital from our users and our members and connect with this uh, circle. So, and it takes- I, I'm very happy to support that, my brother. <laughs> Thank you very much. So big tips, and you guys have heard it. So it's coming, all right? So yeah. now let's take, um, so someone said, I have a rice vest joke and it just keeps increasing. Nice one, <laughs> nice one. So, so someone asked a very curious question because for a young person, you don't have money, you're just starting out life. Um, and after this question, big tip, I'm going to try to like, um, we're going to come back to, a little bit about your experience but it's like if you're starting out today and what you have is just maybe you know the 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 the, the gray matter in your head and just that energy to hustle how would you advise a young person to position themselves for the best essentially for the 10 years for the next 10 years right so let's say someone is 20 today where would you tell them to go what would you tell them to think about so that they'll be in a position in 10 years time to to be in the best place they should go and work you know, I, I, this is the mistake I made uh, when I was in my early 20s. We started this. I made all the mistakes myself rather than uh, watching other people make the mistakes. Mm. You know, uh, um, you, you see all the things you were saying. You worked with Konoko, you did this, you did that, yep. managed yep. Carlisle. You know, mm. that, did that stop you from doing this now? No. Nope. <laughs> so um, for me, I, I was fortunate though that. Um, uh, while I was doing my thing, I also, when, even when it failed, I was uh, accepted by family and my family right. were doing things. And I was actually seeing, apart from seeing, I was actually participating, like my uncle would send me um, board documents, you mm. know, and to, to read. And, um, you know, I, I would come debate the decisions that is going, you know, like uh, the audit committee for, for one of the, um, uh, Companies he, he was in, he was the one heading it. Uh, but mm -hmm. I was the one, I, I would be the one do, doing all the analysis and everything for him. Right. So, right. which was work, but that was more family 
uh, till now, there's, there's a very important point in that. Uh, a lot of the experience that you can gain doesn't also uh, need to be paid for. Uh, um, you, there are some volunteer things that you can do. Uh, you can to, to actually gain experience. Because uh, um, people don't understand that how you break into things. You know, like I know somebody, you know, very, 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 very brilliant young lady. Uh, you know, she's always wanted to be in venture capital. And I told her, just go and do an internship. Mm. And, you know, you know, luckily she found, you know, you know, this is, she got in at the very top, uh, uh, a company that was now the LP of many funds. She, she interned there. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. you know, she was, she was in, um, was it Stanford or Harvard Law or something like that? You know, mm. <laughs> she just, she, <laughs> she interned and that was it. So, uh, even though that internship wasn't paying anything, you know, those internships are very, very important, you know, and I keep stressing it. I, I had a, like, I, I had like a 14 year internship with my uncle, more or less, you know, <laughs> <laughs> okay. a 14 year unpaid internship. And it paid off when I was in, in school in England, when we we're doing cases. And I realized that most of the cases, you know, like most of the things I was talking about were things that I experienced um, by by working, working with him, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So and you, you don't realize how those those kind of things seep in, and that's what, uh, uh, where working is also very very important. There are things you do daily daily. You may be abusing your boss, your salary is not good, but you keep doing it. Keep, but you are becoming an expert daily. Mm -hmm. Every day you waste not learning is is the, is the biggest disservice you can do to yourself. Mm. You know. Every day you <laughs> not learning is your is a big you're making a big disservice to yourself. Yeah. So let yeah. me. Uh, this is uh, ten seventeen. All right. So I don't know how much of your time we still have, Big Chief. But someone asked, um, no problem. <laughs> serendipity can be engineered and not forced. What is yes. your take on this statement? What, so what's your take on that on that statement? Yeah, it can be engineered because like uh, there's a, um, one of my. In fact, my guardian in Lagos and my father, uh, Professor Oswidi, you know, very religious man. He was the one who started NAVDAC. He was mm -hmm. DJ of NAVDAC for is it 10 years or something, you know. You know. Yeah. So he, he always says something that um, God gives us two things, time and place, we'll do the rest, okay? Um, mm -hmm. you, you, you need to understand when you are uh, right time, when you are in the right place. And sometimes th there are some pointers to that uh, uh, of, of once you see it please chase it you know hmm. um you, you know for me the, i, I, I <laughs> there, there are things that have come to me um without me asking you know but is do i know what what those things are you know when we started this talk i gave an example of a guy who came uh, with an idea that he's something that he's doing with government and i sat down and i looked at it now, do you know what that thing did? What? Some other thing, we, and I just got a message now that um, the, the governor has green lighted it. Some other project that you, you now gave me, that idea gave me an idea to now do some other thing with the government that I wouldn't have done before. Mm. And mm. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, you know, yes, yes. Th there's a multiplier effect with these things. And, you know, um, it's just about leaving your mind open. Don't, don't mm. try to think of what you can get out of people. You know, um, just just be open to helping people. You right. know, the more you help people, the more it comes back to you. It comes to you. Hmm. Yeah. Brilliant point. So let me, let, let me, and there's something, I, I want to say something on that. So when, I, when the, some of the, one of the mistakes, uh, I, 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 and I, I shy away from giving people advice because again, what do I know, right? I, 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 but one of the things that I've seen people do a lot is that they optimize too early for uh, making money, right? Um, yes. They, they allow money to be the decider for things. And for me, I've, I've found out that um, the most impactful things that I've done have always been where I was, I was looking for, how do I create value for people? Um, and, and the money is like, you know, if it comes, it comes, if it doesn't, great, but we need to do something important here. And it goes both ways. So there's someone, there's someone on my team um, that when we, when we, he, he's, he's, he was in uni at the time, or he was just finishing uni at the time. And he's a very smart 
um, young kid. And I was talking to him. So I brought him to Lagos. He was going to, I was like, you know what, come to Lagos, let's jam it. Um, and then we talked, we talked for a while. Um, and, you know, I asked him what he wanted to make. And all. he was like, you know what, I, I don't care what, what you're paying. If I just have a place to stay, um, if I just have a place to stay and, and, you know, I want to do this, I want to work with you guys and I like what you're doing. So I was like, okay, um, let come in and do three months, right? Do three months pretty much for, as an internship for free, but you, you have a place to stay and we'll cover feeding and housing, but just come in and do it. And over that three months, I promise you, he was, he was one of the most productive members of our team. And I was like, you know what, fine, we'll put you on a salary. Like, because um, at this point, there's no reason. I mean, he's, and not only did he then start contributing, once we, once we put him on a salary, he's still doing way more than what, you know, we, we, we even expected. So um, he now asked me, oh, you know what, I need to get a new computer because again, pandemic, he has to go back home, but not having a laptop, he was using a computer in our, in our office. So um, we said, okay, he said, can, can I take um, six months salary and buy like there's this really great computer that he wanted to get. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, but rather than do that, let's raise your pay because um, you want to get that computer, it's going to help you be more. You shouldn't start to that. <laughs> yeah, but you can now go without your pay for six months. Because, you know, so, but again, I think about it and I'm like, I'm thinking about what, what can I help him achieve? You know, so I'm advising him for his graduate thesis. Um, you know, um, and he's making it. The funny thing is, I advised him for his graduate thesis, um, and he's connecting with some. to give him value and he's turning around and giving us so much more value so those kind of relationships i told him it doesn't matter where you're going in this world like whatever you want to do if i can help i'll do it right but people come out and and, and contrast that with there's there's a, another person um who was like oh this is what i'm doing doing for for the team um but i need i need my salary raised and he's like Okay, what, why? So, and they couldn't, they're like, well, if you don't see my value, then you don't see my, and it's like, this, this is someone that is just coming into the team and you're not really pushing. So it's like, when people optimize for money upfront, and again, this is not to say, don't get paid what you're worth or don't get the value for your time or your knowledge or whatever else you're offering. But sometimes optimize for more than that, right? And that's going to take you a very, a very big way down the line. So, but there's also another, a corollary to that is, um, how do you, so when you talk about access, so this is relationships. So, so you're talking about relationships now, access to information, access to finance. Some people, mm -hmm. some people start out, you know, maybe because they've achieved a level of success, um, they feel like, okay, everything we, and I see this a lot in Nigeria, to come down to, connect with or learn from or even feel like you are you are open to being taught by someone below you to me <laughs> to me that's a good way to have access because the yeah. people coming behind you they know things you don't right and even for me for where okay we're starting out something new but i know for sure that there's someone that is starting something now that will make that, 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 look. remember what i told you earlier about uh, uh, how lives can change in five years. You know, I don't exactly. joke with... Uh, somebody sent me uh, a link of some uh, young boy doing something in AI, in medical AI. Mm -hmm. I looked at it, I said, well, I want to meet this guy. You know, um, it, it's... The, the superpower of young people is focus. They mm -hmm. can learn one thing and, you know, I, I like young people who choose their own paths, who are not swayed by the general... Uh, 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 movement. So once I see that, mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it's like a beacon, you know, even if, you know, um, they don't even have a product or anything yet, I know that, okay, look, this is, this is somebody who's going to, who's going to go places, you know, right. and, and uh, uh, like that young man that's working with you now, yes. keep that guy close, that guy that, the laptop guy, the first laptop guy, yes, not yes. yes. That, that, yes. that kind of person, um, 
the, the, the whole thing about not thinking of money first and optimizing more for for knowledge and everything is because you, I want to, you want to understand what's really happening. Know the first principles. Yes. Uh, if you if you know the first principles, it's very very good for you to to build on. There's, mm -hmm. Similar story. A guy who one of the very first developers that came through me. I gave him a computer and all of that. You know, this guy did not even pass jump. Huh? <laughs> when he came, he was doing his. Uh, <laughs> You now went to go diploma in uh, computer science in Unibet mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. He ended up making a first class. Wow. He has a PhD from Manchester and he's building um, hedge funds now in, in, in the UK. So, so there are some things you, you help people do that transforms them. You know, who would have thought that somebody who did not even pass jam will come out and End make up. a first class? I, I, I don't write people off. Because mm. I just saw the guy's zeal. I saw the way... This guy taught himself how to code, did everything, and and he, you know, he became the very best. Mm. So, 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 <laughs> there, there are things I like now. That guy is, like, is an even a bigger investor than I am. There are things like <laughs> when I go to London, oh, he go, God, please come save my house. <laughs> you know that? Yeah, <laughs> he's much wealthier than I am. Now. Exactly. Oh, you understand? Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. so, but the guy, the, you know, this is a guy that did not have. Um, was in Benin City, you know what I'm saying? You know, mm -hmm. uh, somebody from our company introduced him to me. I looked at him. Okay, you know what? I bought a brand new computer. Let this guy be using it in the office. Mm -hmm. That was it. The, the guy went crazy. So, so little things like those things matter. Uh, and and um, uh, for me, I I would as much as um, we encourage people to also give opportunities to to young people. Young people should also. Uh, 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 know when they see those opportunities and should they ab abuse them. Awesome. All right. So let me let me hit a few quick questions and then we'll we'll start wrapping up because it's about uh, okay. it's uh, twenty seven minutes to the half hour now. So what? Um. So you said there's a there's an article you wrote really about yes. um the future of the future of wealth uh, management. Uh, wealth management. management. Yes, in yes. in Nigeria, or future of wealth management in general. And then you said something that if you want to know what's going to be popular, look at what is what the rich people enjoy, what rich people enjoy today, and that that's yes. something that's going to be popular and ubiquitous tomorrow. Yes. Right? Yes. So, yes. so using it's that, somebody is that the chief strategist in Google said it is in a book. Anyway, please go ahead. Hmm. Using that frame, what do you think rich people enjoy in Nigeria today? Mm -hmm. uh, and that you think will become ubiquitous and popular in the future. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Um, just look at, you know, if you, if you go around to Banana Island, Ikoi, and all of those places, um, uh, first thing, what, 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 do, what do those places tell you? You know, um, they want comfort and they want to be secure. You know, so, you know, if, if you, this is where, People, the whole thing about when people keep building houses, building um, luxury apartments, and these guys are totally daft. Uh, it, it's it's actually affordable housing that's going to be the biggest boom. <laughs> you know, that is true. Know. That is very true. Yeah, that is very true. There, 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 there are more people who need shelter, you know, today than 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 than, than you can imagine, and, you know, and you don't, you know, this whole the the landlord thing. In, in Nigeria is going to be disrupted. You know, uh, it, uh, it, at the end of the day, it's going to be more people getting together to own property. I, 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 honestly, I can't understand why that is still not yet common. The whole real estate investment trust model and all of those kind of things. You so know. I, I, I think, and that comes down to, because I've, I've explored and um, I've explored some of that. So there's such a regulatory hurdle to do it. But I think okay. you also identified, even within your article, that cooperatives are like that back door, you know? Yes. That, yes. that the people who make, so, so my, my thought process, and I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag a little bit here, because we have version two of Rise coming up, but it's going to be a, a new, either a, a different tier of our products where it's really going to be built around membership, right? You're going to Good. build around that collective membership um, and, so if any of our competitors are, are listening, you know, that's, <laughs> it's fine because again, there's so many people um, that one we can't do, we can we can never possibly handle everybody that need, that needs 
um, what we are offering, right? So, but if we can build a membership tier where we can now start again, making, formalizing these collective ownership structures. Um, so, uh, that, so that's housing is one, comfort and security. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. what, can you give, like, what, what's another thing? And, and that, one, that one is very spot on, like my head is. Oh, 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 okay, no, the thing is, uh, the, the most important, This works and people you never become in fact you can get rich by accident but you become yeah, very poor tomorrow if you're not if you're not smart hmm? yeah, yeah. Uh, um, there there is no dumb wealthy person i keep i keep repeating that uh um I, the, one of my uh, most favorite medium articles uh i wrote the rich man it's called the rich man you know I, there's a part one of that i haven't written the part i haven't put uh, published the part two yet um the part, the part two, the, uh, there's one quote by, uh, what's his name, Chris Rock, said that the shark is rich. Huh? Sh mm -hmm. yeah. But the guy who pays his check every, every week <laughs> is wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, ah. <laughs> you know, because like, the guy, you, you, you are looking at shark, oh, shark is, but, but for shark to become wealthy like the guy who pays his check every month, the guy has to, Shark now has to now start paying people checks uh, mm -hmm. uh, every month. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So, so it, it, there is something, um, you know, I keep trying to make people understand. Uh, you know, you can't get wealthy by yourself. Is it, wealth is, a multi, is it about multipliers. Yes, hmm? yes. So, yes. so, you know, if, if you look at, um, when, when we started, uh, working with telcos there's something that you know that marveled me uh, um, we, we, my, my own family we had invested in econet we used to own 10 percent of it and all of that uh, so i was there in the team i was one who downloaded the logo for econet and did the assessment Ooh, amazing I was, I was the one who paid for the office oh wow you know I, I raised money from the bank and paid for the office but now we we're making some fundamental blunders we were building out our retail uh, uh structure by ourselves no mtn on the other hand had looked at the, the existing market and they realized that, look, you know what? It will be totally stupid if we, if we start replacing this retail structure that's, that's there. Uh, two things that both of them re found out was that Nigeria was predominantly cash-based. There was, um, there are a lot of people who had their own money. Hmm? Now, but what they did not, what MTM found out, which Ecuador did not find out, was that there's also a whole lot of lending happening informally. Yes. Do, do, do you understand yes. what I'm saying? And that yes. lending, there's a hierarchy. Yes. So these guys, they built, you know, so when, when I sat down and I looked at the, 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 the trader hierarchy, both the Yoruba woman selling uh, a rapaz that took carry and the uh, Igbo man who brings in containers of, of products, they, that distribution, yes, that the, the, it, 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 it was so, so important to their wealth. You know, <laughs> so, so that they, they actually, the whole apprenticeship model, the whole, all of those things that they built uh, mm -hmm. uh, around mm -hmm. it. So, and, you know, <laughs> I sit down and I laugh. Um, there, there are, you, people, we keep pointing out outliers. Huh? I, I was telling somebody that, look, um, wealth is also an aggregation uh, a mechanism too as well. Mm -hmm. Banks are aggregators. Jimovia is rich because he aggregated all of those traders hmm? mm. and all of those people who aggregate mm. other people. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So now, if you, if you do not understand aggregation, capital allocation, and, um, you know, uh, building out networks, you know, I, I doubt that you ever become uh, as wealthy as a guy who pays uh, shark. Is, ch is check every week. <laughs> Boom. That's that. So so, I, and I think that's a good, a good, a good. I guess last thoughts to to consider. So um, and, and sorry, and some of the audience, you guys have asked some questions. A lot of them are related to rice, and and so um, I'll have my team answer some. But yeah. let me let me really flesh out what some what I've heard.
from, from what Big Chief just said. So you have to think in networks. And I've seen this firsthand, right? Yes. So yes. my dad was that evil trader that would bring in a container. And two of his brothers and a few of his friends had like, had like lots within that mm -hmm. container. So this is like, oh, half of the container belongs to them. It's, like, it's for oh, this guy, exactly. <laughs> yeah, know, I've seen that happen so many times. <laughs> they know the... They know the that they now take into to So, and all of that value chain um, helps them. Each person has their own money that they are making. So if you are thinking about access to wealth um, and access to investments, that also means that you have to think about the value chain that is going to propel that wealth. Um, and I think MTN, You and that way that those incentives scale up to you. Um, at, MTN, at MTN basically became an aggregator of those of, of, those, those, of those networks. Of those so networks. you have to think about those networks. You have to think about all right. So I think that's a good place to end um, because we've learned. There's so much we've learned. There's some. There's a lot of things that we didn't get into. Um, I was hoping to to. Was there ever? Uh, let me end with this. Was there ever a time because you had your family? Um, you had, you know, you had, you had a lot of some privileges. So someone, yeah. was there ever a version of, of Victor Semota that was just, okay, you know what, even, let me point out, another thing that you did there is that even though you had your family, um, that allowed you to kind of like zig in a different direction, knowing mm -hmm. that you, know, mm -hmm. you can fall mm -hmm. back. I can always come back, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So how does... someone that is on the street today maybe they are smart you thought about them being smart working for someone mm. um making sure that it's not just about the money um mm. but also about the value um also thinking about the network you can plug yourself into relationships you can develop and then taking risks just at some level take a risk i actually feel like if you if anybody does everything you've applied applied here um they are more likely to 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 tap into that wealth so let me, let me, let me, there's something i was going to point out just sorry i'm interrupting you no, no. um for young people like uh, you, you you mentioned somebody who's uh, who's who doesn't have it, access to networks one of the things that we don't realize is that the easiest thing to do is make friends mm. uh, and the internet has actually um amplified that now uh, there are people mm -hmm. i didn't know before that who are now my friends on twitter you, you, that's what i'm saying mm -hmm. you mentioned how twitter actually yes. helps you build an audience yes. and all that yeah. um, it's not about insulting people and all of you know like mm -hmm. <laughs> see it's so it's very very easy to hack now uh, uh, if you have access to the internet mm -hmm. uh, and, and you, you can create yourself and you can learn so it's it's it's, it's not Look, it's not as um, what the, the the people who are really poor. Um, according to my friend Idris Ayobelu, you know, one of the most prolific angel investors in Nigeria, I said uh, the people who are really poor are people who have no friends and family. Huh. Do you understand? Yeah. So once you have friends and family, come on, it's 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 for you to multiply each other, and 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 that's that's how it happens. All right. Sounds great. Okay. So, um, uh, I know you guys have a lot more questions, but, um, we, So honestly, honestly, join our Telegram group. Let me put the link. I, I know it's already been shared before. Um, Apple has this beautiful thing where I can copy a link from my phone 
and drop it on my computer and vice versa. I don't know what I was missing when I didn't use um, when I didn't use <laughs> Apple, <laughs> Apple products. You know? so, um, I always use their phone, but I'm like, eh. You know, but yeah, here's the link to our to our Telegram. Group. Um, so join this um, ever this year, actually. I think into any Thanks. area. Um, so, um, uh, uh, Victor, I want to thank you so much because, again, this was part of the moment I asked. And you, you actually said, you know, I, I've been trying to avoid things like this, but I'm going to do it, you know. So I appreciate that. I thank you very much. Thank, um, thank you very much. Before, rise, you guys, this is not really going to be the last time you, you interface with him because we're going to find some time in his schedule to, to, to help us um, do some of these things that, that we've outlined here. Um, while being respectful of his status as a retired investor. So, <laughs> but um, thank you so much. And attendees, thank you for always showing up for our meetings. It's always recorded. We're going to share that in the Telegram group for those of you who were not able to come in. Um, but we look forward to next, next month as well. We're going to try to also make it as exciting and informative as this one. So thank you, everyone. And um, thank you again, Big Chief. I really appreciate Th thanks it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Have a wonderful thanks, day. Thanks, everybody. All right. right. <laughs> okay.